Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Harlangen. But before that, this video is brought to you by Andre Yokoma and Donald Smart. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Harlangen map can be found at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now let me read you some of the description. That is quite honestly loaded with a whole bunch of hard to pronounce words. Hard lion together with min minigen, yeah, okay. And bees buys, yeah, okay, form a so-called yeah community. And they are closely linked culturally and socially. In Hard Lion, you literally live on the sunny side of Merzig because of its special location. Sarland has one of the most sunny days on average throughout the year, with almost 500 inhabitants and a culturally and historical unique Lady Chapel, and a lot of landscape around it. Harlangen is a magnificent example of rural. I uh, yeah okay, it's there's a lot of words I can't pronounce. I'm sorry for that. At any rate, on this map you'll find two farms, one BGA, two apple orchards, two sharp willows. I don't I don't know what that means. 85 fields, including five fields of grapes. Field sizes ranging from 0 0.01 hectares up to 12, six productions, and two forests. Now, this map does include several required mods. Those required mods are placeable filling stations, placeable slurry trader, field silo, old manure heat pack, German grain mill, agricultural fair, European lamps, silo plate, lime and manure station, farmer's market, three-sided farm pack, old village building pack, 60 buildings pack, and the sugar mill. Now, in addition to those required mods, we are going to be using the mods. We typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, food calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you load this map up in farm management or start from scratch, you will find all the farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farmer mode. In addition, you do start out with starting machinery in all game modes. Therefore, the only differences are you do not own any land in those alternate game modes. And if you happen to be playing the system on a lower end system, you shouldn't have any issues with respect to frame rates. I was getting a nice solid 60 FPS once the texture is loaded in on my test system, which uses AMD integrated graphics. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And I think one of the predominant things you're gonna find is a significant portion of this map is forestry. While we do have all the standard crops available to us in FS22 on this map, including our premium crops, you might be doing a fair bit of forestry on this map. Cause if we take a look at our lands overview, you're gonna see we have two large forested areas. There are $335,000 and $195,000 respectively. But we have farmland 255, which is the unbuyable land, which I call any land that includes basically the town area and the roads and such. Well, you can buy it for zero bucks and it includes a massive amount of forest. So why on earth would you buy these two plots when you could just get some trees for free? Now we do start out our study farm here on farmland ID 95, which includes a little section over here to the east. And that can be vaulted in any alternate game mode for $131,000. And the starting farmland is going to include your arable farm as well as a cow barn. Now there is a second farm on the map that is located over here at farmland ID 92. That can be bought for $631,000. And farmland ID 92 includes pig and cows and we will have to obviously buy that in order to see those now in addition to those two starting farms there is a sheep pasture located at farmland id 96 as well as farmland 93. At farmland id 90 we have a fairly large apple orchard and then there is another fairly large apple orchard up here at farmland id 89. let's go and take a look at our farmland lease screen this is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included, then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? 
And now we can go and cross-reference that with our field calculator screen, which is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. Now what we can see is we got a large amount of fields that are kind of four hectares or less. We do have a few here that are larger than that. And then we have a few very large fields, three specifically that are larger than 10 hectares in size. If we take a look at our crop counter, we are looking at the generic crop counter for Farm Sim 22 on this map. And with respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. In addition, we do have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. That trend continues down with respect to all of our base game production items. In fact, the agricultural fair is pretty much guaranteed to accept nearly everything on this map. We do have the ability to buy and sell lime, and we also have our ability to sell stones. If you are playing with the farm production pack, well, the agricultural fair will take your washed root crops. And also, if you are playing with the premium expansion and the platinum expansion, well, rest be assured, the agricultural fair will be your, well, will be your huckleberry because you're going to be able to sell pretty much everything there. With respect to pumps and hoses, we are going to be able to sell our separated manure. And then we also on this map, well, we have some other things. We have lettuce, red. Melon, pallets, apple juice, apples, wooden climbing frame tower, yogurt with sugar, fruit yogurt, and we have a bagel, melon tart, apple tart, and if you are playing with straw harvest, we do have the ability to sell our hay and straw pellets as well. With respect to our starting fleet, we start out with a decent listing of machinery. It is all owned and none of it is leased. We have the cows at the main starting farm, but we don't actually have any cows in the barn. We do have contracts available on this map, and we also start out by owning a grape processor at the main starting farm and a small vegetable garden, which is going to have the ability to produce tomatoes, strawberries, lettuce, red lettuce, and melons. And all we need to do is provide straw and water. Then lastly, this map does not have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. Start with the Voltra A135 High Tech and Landini Rex 4 120 GT small tractors. We have our 1986 pickup truck. We have the Welgar DK 115 trailer. We have then the Mega 4000 L Rape and Olive Sprayer. We have the MRWK 6000 Grape Trailer and the MP122 Osea Grape Hedger or Trimmer. We have the Servo 25 Plow, as well as the Rabe EG39 Cultivator, and the Nordstein HK25 NS3030 Cedar and Power Hero combination. We have the ZATS 3200 Fertilize Spreader. We also have the F240 Front Mower, and the Alpine Hit 4.4H Tedder, and the Top 342 Windrower. We've got the Small Baler in the Massey Ferguson 1840. And we have the RA142 TMR mixer and the Joskins Aquatrans 7300S water trailer. We have the XB150 Hauer front loader arms. And for the front loader, we have a universal bucket. And then lastly, we have a 600 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, well, the map doesn't have any custom vehicles or implements but we have a 60s building pack, which is part of the required mods, and it does have a pile of pallets that we can buy at the shop. Now, when we load here, we are kind of at a picnic area, just overlooking the farmland and you know, kind of a town, and then we have the big forest in behind us. We have an information panel here with a picture, real life Google Earth picture, and I'm not sure if this is to represent an area on the map. If it is to represent the area on the map, it must be representing the area that we can see to the south. But to the north, well, you can see that is a lot of farmland as opposed to being a dense forest. Our pickup truck is going to be located right up here. And then we have a road that's running kind of east and west that we can use to get back to our farm. But instead, we're just going to tab over to our starting farm. We 
We have a wardrobe trigger located right here. Our sleep trigger is going to be located on the side of the house. Closest to the street. And then we have our... Garden. It's going to be for our vegetables. We have house spawn point, And then we have our dump point for our water. Now, as far as this farm being customizable, well, both farms, you can sell all the buildings, but a fair bit of the deco elements are going to remain on all the farms. So I wouldn't recommend necessarily selling anything on these farms. We have our slurry point. We have our animal dealer trigger for 80 cows. We have our milk point, and then we have our manure heap. Inside, we're going to find our straw and food trough. Inside this building, we have our dump station for our silo. And then we also have our fill pipe for our silo located right there. This is where we tabbed. We have our grape trailer. And that's pretty much the main starting farm. Now let's go and check our area across the street here. And here we have kind of a building zone, but this also has some silage bunkers. Come on. There we go. So we have a silage bunker located right there. And we have one of those in-ground silage bunkers located right here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at build mode. We do have a fair number of required mods, so we are going to see lots of mods listed here under our sheds, silos, extensions, and such. Now, with respect to production, we again do have some custom productions here because of the required mods. So as a couple custom production cell points, greenhouses. Here we're gonna have our apple trees. We have several custom animal buildings also included with the building pack. And then as far as ground textures go, we've got a decent listing of ground texture options. And then we have a fairly minimal listing of paintable plants. And our trees are fairly standard. Let's make our way back over here to the starting farm. Now, I reminded myself that I did go and show off the precision farming soil map. This map is making use of the French soil map, which when you see it, you're going to realize that that's the same as the generic soil map. So minus the huge section of the map that's covered with forest, you see we got big swaths of silty clay all around the edges of the map. And we have a few areas that are predominantly loam, but overall toward the center also we have some loamy sand and sandy loam as well down here where we have our starting farm. Now I've gone ahead and purchased the various farms and animal pastures. So let's go ahead and check out the secondary farm. So the main farm was right here. And now we have made our way east to this area. And we're gonna come into the farm through the main entrance. And then around to the right, we do have our farmhouse where we have our sleep trigger.
Around the side, we have some general storage. We have our farm silo, so we have our dump and fill trigger. More machine storage and implement storage around the sides. Then here we have our pig sty for 60 pigs. We have our food trough. Around the back, we have our slurry point. We have a cow barn. So we have our manure heap between the pigs and the cows. We have our slurry point. Always we get this door wrong. And we have our food trough in here. We have our milk trigger, and then we have our buy point for a total of 250 cows. We have another large slurry storage area here. And then we have a fuel tank, and that is this secondary farm. Now I want to kind of double back a little bit because we have a sheep pasture located over here. And the sheep pasture also has, well, also has some solar panels. And I found this interesting when I first saw it and I was reminded by a video that I watched about, about, um, solar and ag and kind of a partnership where there would be this sheep farmer that would bring his sheep around and let them graze in solar farms and the people that ran the solar farms didn't mind it at all because it meant they didn't have to pay people to come and mow the grass around the solar farms and basically keep the vegetation down because the sheep did it for them so it's an interesting kind of sheep need some place to eat and the solar farm needs some way of keeping the grass cut down. So we have our wool point, we have our food trough, and we have our water trough. Now just below the starting farm, there's also a secondary smaller sheep pasture. Sorry, I was getting a little turned around there. And that's going to be right here. And this area already has sheep in it when you buy it. We already had four sheep at the start, and we have a total of 15 in here. And we have our food, our water, and our wool once again. I'm going to make my way back up here to our starting farm because that's where I want to do our aerial fly around with respect to the rest of the points of interest on this map. So here we are at our starting farm location. We can see the prominent forest to the north. We have arable fields that kind of wrap around the central forest, as you can see there. Way up to the north, we there have some apple orchards, which we can't really see right now. And we also have some apple orchards in uh, this general direction, just on the other side of that tree line as well. But the majority of what we're going to look at is right here, kind of to the south, right around town. So as far as productions on this map, this map includes 31 productions, but that number is a little misleading because there are 21 apple trees and each apple tree is its own unique production. So we have rape, which is at the main farm. We have 21 apple trees, a BGA, two small 
vegetable greenhouses, or sorry, vegetable gardens, one at each farm location. We have fruit and oil. We have a dairy, a sugar mill, a country bakery, a sawmill, and a grain mill. And this is going to be our sugar mill. So we have our pallet point, our interactive icon, and our sugar meat dump point. We've already seen the small sheep pasture that is located right here. Let's loop up and we have a little bit of the agricultural fair location right there, I believe. Let's go ahead and check. Yep, agricultural fair. That's literally going to accept everything for sale. On the other side, we have our dairy. Located right here. So we have our dump point. Our pallets are going to spawn inside of here. And we have our interactive icon on the inside. We're going to have a rundown of the productions here in a little bit. Here we have that sheep pasture. This is going to be our bakery. So we have our pallet point, we have our dump point, and our interactive point around the front. Just on the other side of the bakery. We have our vehicle dealer. Let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra so we can see where things spawn. So we got a fairly large area here for our vehicles to spawn at and a pretty easy way of getting out of the shop. Although we do have to be careful about those concrete barriers and we have our dealer trigger right here but I mean if need be you can sneak here between these trees right now we have our sawmill so we have our wood chip point we have our wood dump point our wood cell trigger our pallet spawn point and our interactive icon around the other side of the sawmill Here we have another, this is probably going to be our vegetable area, let's check out. So we have our dump point, we have our pallet point. And yeah, this is our fruit and oil press. Here we have a fill point for manure. We have our animal dealer trigger. We have a buy point for slurry. We have a sell point for our bales. Then over here we have a buy point for lime. We have a buy point for water. And we have a sell point. We already talked about the farm that is located over here. To the south of that, we have our biogas plant. And the biogas plant has two three-sided bunkers. And the BGA itself. So we have our digester, our interactive icon, our dump point for slurry, and our fill pipe for digestate. Making our way up the northern road here. 
Although, really, it's the road to nowhere because, well, that's the map boundary over there. We have our pallet spawn point. And we have our dump point. This is going to be our grain mill. Let's make our way to the north. And we'll see the large apple orchard start to spawn kind of directly in front of us on the other side of these trees. So here we have the large apple orchard. And each row of trees is going to be its own production. So we have a cell point there. Inside of here. All right, so that's going to be actually, this is a pallet storage, bale and pallet storage. So we have our apple trees and the apple trees are simply going to require water and they're going to output apples and each row is its own production. All right, so we have our apple spawn point there, the interactive icon or water point. So it's one production, there's another, third, a fourth, fifth, you kind of get the idea, six and seven, and then we have eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So we have fifteen apple trees or apple productions in that orchard. And then if we make our way to the north, well, we're going to see that we have several more up there. Now let's talk about our score a little bit. Like I said, we're going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. In addition, we're going to give the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell all of our basing crops, animal outputs, and productions. With respect to the farms being customizable, well, we're going to give the map a half a point. And the reason we're giving them a half a point is there's a lot of deco objects on both farms that just cannot be sold. And as such, it really makes those areas unbuildable. So here we are at the secondary apple orchard. We've got some general storage. We have a water trigger, and then we have multiple apple productions here. We have three rows wide and then they're going to be um two productions deep so we have six apple orchards over here as well then we have our large forested area and again a lot of this forested area can be bought for zero dollars let's go ahead and take a look at our production and just do kind of a general production rundown so in addition to the grape processing and the small vegetable garden at the main farm, if you buy the secondary farm, you'll get another small vegetable garden. And then we have all of these apple trees. And again, they're going to take water and make apples. We have our fairly standard biogas plant. We have our fruit and oil press, which is going to accept grapes, apples, sunflowers, canola, and olives. And it's going to output raisins, grape juice, apple juice, sunflower oil, canola oil, and olive oil. We have our dairy, which is also going to be able to make yogurt with sugar by making use of milk and sugar. We have our sugar mill, fairly standard there. Our country bakery is going to make bread, melon tart, cake, and apple tart, as well as bagels. Then we have our sawmill for our wood planks, our wood pallets, and our wooden climbing frame. And then we have our grain mill, which is fairly standard. Buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique as well as ground textures. Ground textures are good. Building textures are kind of half and half. Um, we're going to give the map three quarters of a point there with respect to building and ground textures. So here we have some grapes over here. One of which is 30. 
that we do own at the start. I must have missed that one. Must have been a very small area and I didn't see it pop up as being owned. Then lastly, trigger in interactive areas being clearly marked. Oh, I just, I just can't remember if I found anything that wasn't marked. So we're going to go ahead and give the map a one. Why not? So a full point there. So that's going to give this map a score of four and a half out of five. I'd love to know what your all thoughts are with respect to this map. I think it's a really cool map. I like the idea of this big forest in the middle. I'm not so sure I'm keen on the idea of having so much of it free by being tied to uh, the, the roads and the town area. But hey, you know, you do you. That's fine with me. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map. And until next time, happy farming.